and the good thing about this question is it can be used for both high level design question as well as low level design question so this used to be also one of my favorite question because it could be asked to an sd3 senior software engineer or even architect principal architect and it could also be used to test the coding skills for anyone and get into the low level design concepts as well so we'll cover in this session both the high level de design concepts as well as low level design questions related to it so here manoj is talking about that okay one of the important thing is hashing function how to get that hash but there are other is important stuff as well we'll discuss that so question is you have to design a url shortener service and url shortener service as i said is a service where you will be given a url you will be given a long url and then you have to respond with the short urls so this is the question which will be asked to you in the interview and you have to design a system this is just one liner statement it is very simple question most of the software developers they will be aware of this systems so not too much of explanation is required in one minute the interviewer asks this question and now ball is in your court to answer this and how do you start so the first thing you should start by some clarification questions and clarification questions on the functional aspect ask the interviewer what are the exact requirements so is just the, it is about shortening the url and returning the shortened url to the user so that he can use it and post it in various places like blogs and tweets and articles or there is some customization so there could be some extended use cases as well for example i can provide long url and i can put some keyword or some short url of my choice is the customization of short url allowed that could be first question next question is if he says yes then this problem becomes more complex because you have to create the user management feature as well user should be able to register then once he log in he should be able to store short url and customize it and can do various cred operations on that but usually the interviewer will say that this feature is more advanced and it will take more time to to be discussed in the interview so he will say no this is not required no customization is required now next thing is what you should ask is that what are other features do you need to track the number of hits for the short url so this could be said yes or no your interviewer may say yes then you have to add the field for putting the number of visits to the site and if he says no you just ignore and in this class we will focus mostly on the short url generation so we'll not get into too much detail about keeping the count of number of hits and other parameters so arun i have one question sure so, sure i yeah just wanted to understand why the urls grow big what is the reason like if we take rest urls are we see that Yeah. they are basically shortened and we do not pass the request parents through the like a query parameters and all we don't pass usually we try not to so what really causes the url to grow so big I and mean, then we uh, actually see, see that whenever we are copying it did uh, yeah kind of observe great yeah so first thing is when i say shortening the url also first important thing is the domain name now domain name are usually long because long domain names are cheap small domain names are very costly some sites will create a big domain name and small domain names four or five letter words they will not use just for the cost reason and because the cost of domains could be in millions and thousands of dollars and this is for registering and then there is annual charges as well so the short urls could be very costly second thing is in content management system when there are various blogs and folders 
there is a complete file structure, folder structure. So in normal laptops, all the file path can become long because if you are organizing things in various folders, then uh, you will have the folders in the path. So these are some of the reasons why URLs are longer. And Twitter allows very small number of uh, characters, probably I think 256 characters in the tweets. So if you have a long URL, half of your tweet could be just consumed by the URL. So it is very advisable to shorten the URL. And shorten URL provides two features. One is it looks good and it could be very easily copied and shared across in various platforms, including WhatsApp or Twitter. And the other stuff is if there are a lot of parameters used which you don't want to expose it to users, then you would shorten the URL. One important use case is many people do affiliate marketing. And in that they have the codes, reference code, there could be coupon code. So there could be various parameters also when you give the URL. So these are various reasons why the URLs are long. And the shortened URL service is now getting very popular because this can just contract all these long characters and provide a user-friendly short URL which could be used in sharing in blogs and other, other various channels by the owner of that particular URL or whoever is owning that page or sharing this page. Need not have to be your own page. You can just shorten the URL of anything. If you like some reference and you want to keep it in your note as well, you can shorten that. So any queries other than this? Hope it answers. Yes, Tarun. Thank you. Okay. So the simple requirement is how many characters should we encode? So if we look into the functional requirements, we have to decide about how to convert the long URL to small URL and how small should be the small URL. This is something very important. Now, some other non-functional requirements should also be considered while answering these questions. These are about what would be the access time. Definitely, this has to be very fast service because if you use a simple file storage, for example, for storing the short URL, then the response time will not be fast. It will be slow. If your database is not indexed properly or your data is design is not proper, then also the response time could be slow. So here, most important requirement from user perspective is it should be fast to respond with the long URLs. So there are two use cases basically. First is given long URL, you have to return the short URL. And the other use case is given a short URL, it should be able to give, redirect you to the original URL. After clarifying the functional and non-functional requirement with the interviewer, you should just take five minutes to just elaborate about the problem and just re-verify with the interviewer that you have a good understanding of the problem and you are solving the right problem, then you should be able to proceed. Now, what you have to do is, in any of system design question, good idea is to think about MVP. MVP is most viable product. So whenever you design a product, you cannot design all the features at once. But first release should have some minimal features which are good enough to be shared with public. But they could be simple enough also so that you can de deliver it, release it, and see the feedback of the user. So that's called most viable product. So hope everyone understand this most viable product terminology. So in case anyone has query, feel free to ask. So this is a very so important I, concept in agile methodology. So on the term, uh, so yes. as far as non-functional, right? So we, you need to speak low. Well, you spoke about le low latency, but you need to define the system, right? It's like, it's a heavy read system in a right system. Yes. Fault tolerant and it should be scalable. It should be more of available system. 
Oh, the uh, something that normally any intruder accepts that whether you're telling what type of system it is, the non-functional requirement. Because when you tell, and so there sometimes they specifically ask you whether it is a read only system or a yes. read system or whether what cap theorem sorry. They don't ask you directly, but at least you need to tell whether it is an available system or it is more of a yes and the system from a high level time. But sometimes. Uh, yeah, it depends on the system design that you speak about. Perfect. Yes, this is a really very valid point uh, raised. I was anyway coming to that point because now I have clarified and then we'll list down various non-functional requirement. So one good technique of uh, providing the functional requirement is what I was sharing was provide some user stories. So there's a good concept uh, in a user story, you state this is generally a format is like this. As a user, you can enter a URL to shorten in the system to get back a unique shortened URL. This could be a unique user story. So user story talks about who is the user. So here, any end user, what he does, he enters the URL and what he gets is the short URL. And also you state the purpose of why he want to get the short URL because he wants to share it in different other posts and it should be unique. So this is a kind of a user story. So you can share these user stories to the interview very briefly. So other examples are as a user, you can type the shortened URL in the browser to get redirected to the original URL. So that's another user story. So this is some nowadays in Agile, very commonly used technique of requirement gathering. And you can come up with multiple user stories. So another examples are, as a user, I want the service to be secure so that my data is not compromised or my URL is accessible in a reliable manner, right? Other example is as a user, I want the service to be fast so that I can shorten the URL and share my URLs as quickly as possible. So these could be other user stories. So please note that when you phrase a user story, you start with who is the user? We just use user as an end user. There could be an admin user as well. You can say as a buyer, or as a seller, you can use various kind of actors in your system for creating user stories. Now coming to non-functional requirements. So already Manoj covered a lot of them that low latency is very important to understand that it is a read heavy system. So the system is fed with the long URL and once the URL is shortened, that shortened URL will be read more often rather than a user will be generating new URLs. So user will be always entering some short URLs, but then once he has registered the short URL, he'll be using that URL hundreds of times. So that's one requirement that the system should be read heavy and this we can use to design the database as well. Other requirements are system should be highly available. Because if system is not available, then uh, if you will give the short URL, it will not be able to redirect you to the original URL. You will not be able to access the site and you have to use the original URL always. So the purpose of system is not solved. So that's another important requirement. Other stuff is system should stay consistent, right? So that's another requirement. Uh, that it should always return the original URL. This is another non-functional requirement. Then, yeah, availability and no outage should be there because if one system dies, there should be some other systems who should be able to take care of and the system should be able to take inputs or take requests from millions of users because, you know, if we have to make this application very scalable and if we want to earn from this then definitely we have to support millions of requests per second 
So the scalability is other non-functional requirement. So these are the non-functional requirements for the system. Since the system is very simple, here all the basic requirements of a distributed system applies. So it should be available, should be scalable, it should be reliable, it should have concurrency control. So these are things which you should share to the interviewer as your understanding of non-functional requirement. Anyone have any inputs or any doubts in this? I don't, as per the CAC theorem, we can only have two of them, consistency, availability and partition tolerance. So in this case, what are the two things that we are trying to achieve? My guess is that consistency and availability. Partition tolerance is something that we are going to compromise. Is that Manoj, you want to take this question? Yes. As per cap there, so partition tolerance is something that you can never inevitable. So it is always that in any system that you design, it can be concurrent system. It has to the partition tolerance will always exist. Physically it is it will be there. So you cannot avoid that part of it. So here it is more of an available system. So we are telling that the system should be available at any given part of it. We are compromising on the consistency part. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Great. So how are we uh, like not very keen on having the consistency? So Manu Is it because because it's read, read heavy reads reading system or something like that? I yeah. Manoj, can you elaborate on the consistency part as well? Yeah. So the consistency part is that for every URL right, for every read right, you have to be very continuously give the same URL. So even if the system should not go down and the other point is that should be so the URL that you read, right? So every time it has to be correctly sent. But and if it goes down, right, so that if it is not that then the users will not be able to access uh, or do things. And the other point is that the URL that they're reading, right, it's going to change dynamic. It is once written to a short and error, that's the same URL that you're going to give. Why it is, why we are not keen on consistency, but being more of an available system is people who are reading, right? It should be more available. We say that you see your, some of your friends and a YouTube shot and URL. It should give you, it should be able to log in into that URL. It should not, it's not about being more consistent. That video should not be like what. If it is not even able to access, but you should be able to log in into that system to see some other video at least for that given part of time. And again, if you try, you should be able to get that video. So that's why that is because it makes you more engaging towards that platform. If it is more consistent, then you would just leave it saying that ah, it's not available and you would move on something else. So systems like these, right, should be more engaging to meet the customer demand. That's why. Systems that are built like this, they more towards being more of an available system than being more of consistent. Sure. So now I'll give my answer. I have a different perspective here. In this system, when you are shortening a URL, you give a big URL. Now, first thing the system will do, I'm just going into the algorithm, is first create a short URL, it will do the hashing function for the long URL and we'll discuss going forward how it will do this shortening of URL, what hash function we will be using. But the first thing is a short URL is generated. First thing the system does is it checks in the database whether the short URL is already there or not. So there are two queries which will be executed while storing the short URL. One is a check whether the short URL already exists. If it already exists, then another short URL will be generated. If it does not exist, then it will be stored in the database. So this check is making the system take more time to store the data. So here, if you see, consistency is more important for us Availability, because you are doing check first and then, no, so the system is not responsive very immediately. So here, consistency is most important for us. 
and availability could be little bit of compromised in this particular case. So here, consistency should be opted for the right case. For the reading case, it is just the redirection. So here, no, the operation is very simple. So here, when someone reads, there's only one query which is executed for a short URL. It will find the long URL and it will redirect to it. So yes, no reading case, there's no concern about the consistency. But yes, again here, there is some sharding and partitioning which can be used to ensure that you are getting a highly available system. So here you would say that Network partitioning is used. You now, when you shard, you will store maybe different URLs from different region in different database. So, if for read case, more availability is required, less consistency. For write, more consistency is required, less availability. Understood? So, and just, I just wanted to check on top of what both of you have said. For example, if I am giving the same big URL, yes. uh, for example, I am, if I'm not able to, if the system is not responsive to give the short URL that has earlier generated, probably it would generate, regenerate some other, it gives back yes. both the kind of redirect to the big URL. So is that acceptable? Like a big has, is mapped to two shortened URLs because one particular operation, for example, fetching the short URL was not responsive or due to some other issue. If, 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 when you said that the consistency can be compromised, it, this is for Manoj. So I'm just saying that if consistency can be compromised, so is it what you meant when I send a big URL? If the retrieval system is not responsive, then it generates one more new URL that is also mapped, both redirect to the same big URL. Is that allowed? I did not get your question completely, but I will mean, find for a read system, right? For any read system and that saying that, yeah. So you know the business scenario that this needs to be consistent or more available. For URLs, like short URLs, you're trying to fetch and if the system is not consistent, that's fine. Because it's only one URL you're trying to get, but it has to be more of an available. Because in this point, right, in the read system, there's nothing you're going to do operate on top of it to make it more consistent. You're not going to do any, on during the read, right? You're not going to change the values or anything. You just request and it gets redirected. Uh, that is it you have to, as part of this system. So every time when a customer is trying to read, right? He should be given the best experience of being redirected and somehow so that the system is always available. That is why we tell that because the volume of, uh, as per the you know, documentation, Right. So it tells for one write, there is going to be 100 reads. So if you think that if it is a consistency, you cannot choose availability, then because every read, right, has to be very consistent along with the, along with the read, right, then if any of your shards or any of your nodes go down, you're going to block all your writes and all your reads. That's not going to be in this system because you want to read. All the URLs that have been read or something that is already available in the system. And that's not going to change by a right system. That is why we tell that this system is more of a uh, heavy read and more of a consistency. Yeah, sorry, more of an availability. Whereas the right part has to be consistent. That naturally comes, you naturally comes as you take care of a right system. Right does not collide with the read system in this part of the system design. because. Once you write only, you get a, a shortened URL, which you start sharing along with someone else. So that is why. So once you share that, then that the volume of the record, uh, request starts increasing. As a, there is always going to be only one write a request. Even if it fails, you try to send a second one and you get back. So that differentiation, you should be able to catch it when trying to send multiple systems. You'll go. Once you start designing different systems, you will understand that. Yes. See, from the user's perspective, since he is creating the URLs, short URLs, 
less number of times. So the system, I would say, here I have taken an assumption that the read-to-write ratio is 100 is to 1. So if a URL is generated, it will be read by hundreds of my friends because I'll be sharing that short URL to everyone. And uh, I will be creating this URL only once. So for example, if I create a short URL for my homepage and then uh, share it across, hundred times more it will be read and then written. So this is one assumption. Other assumptions you should often tell to the interviewer that these are the assumptions which I'm taking. First about the read versus write ratio. Other is what would be the chain of data storage. You can say it will be stored for five years and you can also talk about what would be the volume. You can say no, I expect 1 million users creating short URL maybe every month, every day. So you can put some rough estimate. So here I've said that 5 million short URLs will be created every month and around 500 million raid requests will be happening for my site. And now you can use these numbers to calculate your CPU processing requirement. So here then you can take up some assumptions about that uh, your server is able to handle these many requests per second. So how many servers you will need? This way you can calculate. Same you can say that a URL could be 1000 characters. Roughly longer URLs could be 1000 characters or 500 characters. And you have to store these long URLs, so you would need maybe 1000 1 KB memory for storing each URLs. And if you have, say, 500 million such URLs, then you, know, you will need roughly five, 500 GB of storage. So this is how you can calculate. You can calculate that, okay, assume your site has to work for five years so because you will provision the servers right now servers and various resources right now so that you can keep functioning the site for next five years then you can do the calculations accordingly and say that okay this would be the data requirement so with my calculation here i see that there is 30 terabytes required if i have to use the url and store them i use one kb storage each URL and needs you no know, 30 terabyte of memory will be required or storage will be required and same I can use for calculating the bandwidth about how many read write response I know that uh, there is a request URL is being transferred from server to the client side so the net bandwidth required is roughly around 1 kp for the for this request response for the application. So you have to do some calculation next after non-functional requirement and share these numbers to the interviewer. This is what you think of now how large the system will be. Another important thing is you would need also some caching because everything you are storing in the database. So caching generally is 80-20 rule and here least recently used systems uh, you no know, uh, cache policy can be used and most frequently sites will be cached and you can use 20 percent of the total database as your cache storage because out of millions of urls which will be stored 20 percent will be more popular and will be used very frequently as the rest 80 percent they may be used very rarely so yeah. you can have a storage okay I don't know anything. So during the back of the you know, estimation, right? Sometimes it would be very hard to calculate certain things if you start putting numbers. Not yes. wrong. If you don't put wrong numbers, right? It will be very difficult to calculate. Yes, yes. So yes. it is very important that we say that for every per second you want to calculate. So don't put 86,400. Put it around 86,000 or 87,000 per second request. The other thing, one formula which I did is if you add something like X million into Y 
kilobytes, then it will become GB. When you multiply those two, then it becomes GB. When it is X million into Y million, Y megabytes, right? Then it becomes bits. Uh, yeah. So it is like millionth into KBs is equal to GB. If it is millions into megabytes, it is terabytes. That formula, if you understand, then you would be able to do it. So the other thing you should be able to learn is what is 10 to the power 10 or it can to the power 10 or it can be 10 to the power 3. So anything 10 to, so once you calculate, if it's to the power 9, then you can stately think about thing that the storage should be in GBs. If it is 10 to the power 1, right, when you calculate, then it comes to 10 to the power 1, then stately think it is terabytes. Like, uh, yeah, so for every three zeros, right, multiples of three zeros, right, from 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 9, if you move, then it becomes GB. And to the power 1, then it becomes, so that calculation, yeah, that is another way, then you need to memorize that and always have it handy because that will help you. Nice. Keep the calculations simple and need not have to be very exact. I'll give one example. So for this case, one way I can say is, I want 86,400 requests per day. Okay, assume interview gives you that you will have 86,400 requests per day. You can easily convert it to 90,000 or you can even convert it to say 100,000 if it's 86,000. Use all these kind of uh, rounding off techniques you can round off numbers very quickly and convert it into millions, billions. So you should be very familiar with conversions. So there is 1024, you know, always multiple, but you always don't need to use 1024 multiple because no one is really bothered about exactness of the calculation. What we are looking forward to is the rough scale of the system. Whether it is 90 MB or 100 MB does not matter much because you know, this all estimates are rough estimates. We just have some idea about what is the volume. But if it's 1 MB and you are saying 100 MB, then that's a problem. There's no harm in telling 85 or 90, 100 because that's of the same scale. So... We'll proceed next. So caching we have done. So yes, I know these are the things which you should do, take care of. Next step is you decide the APIs. So APIs, I have here decided there are two APIs. There could be some server host, but I got this application running and I was putting up real server names as well. But yeah, you can just have some server.com. This you can just assume hostname is someserver.com. So here I have a URL like API slash link or you can have API slash URL or whatever you want. API slash the name of the resource. In this case, I've called the resource link. Link is short URL or link is the URL which I'm entering. So when I do a post request and I pass as a parameter you link is equal to URL. I get the response which is the short URL. So here I have given an example also. So in case a user enters this URL as the to be shortened, this is my LinkedIn profile page URL. And what I get in return is this, this seven digit number, which can be used as short URL. So to get the original URL, what I need to do is I need to pass the short URL here. So it's the post name slash this number which I'll put. Then I'll get the original URL. So this is how my application will work. And it has two APIs. One is for creating short URL. Other one is for getting the original URL. And these are the signatures. So you can share these API design also to the interviewer. Then Next thing what you should do is you should do the database design as well. So in this, the database is simple. You may have a table which has the URI ID, original URL. You can use the short URL as the primary key and that could be the ID 
and in case you want to use store the user details then you store you no know, user id name email address of a user which is creating the url but yes most important is you should just understand that how you would design the table for storing the urls that's the most important primary part for this application and then you can talk about that there will be various system components which is you would need load balance you'd need an application server because this is where you will be putting your you'll need caching and you'll need a database so these are various components which you'll need and you may need some monitoring system health check system as well to see whether your api is available system is available or not that's very important nowadays that all your microservices in this case you have these rest service this could be in a microservice you can call these as microservices as well because they take care of one functionality and you can have these two microservices in your application and you can have monitoring for each of these microservices and in case it's down you get to know immediately and you can take corrective measures so monitoring and alerting could be and then there can be telemetry also in place where you can also track how many requests have come from what countries what is the date and time of access what is the url which has been asked for and what kind of browsers were used and no other details about the user you can capture these are done because if you want bill or charge your customers for using the service or you want to optimize your server performance then these details are very important you can utilize it and fine tune your application so this is about all the key design considerations for answering this question how to design tiny url system any queries any other things which we want to discuss so are we all in okay yes just i was taking a pause so that you guys can think through and this about the overall system design block diagram for this service i haven't created this myself but yes i found this was good so here the design system design which you can present to interviewer you can draw something like this and show to your interviewer that this is how you so you have a user you have a load balancer then the api gate you have two services so this is for link and then you have the cache and the database so this is how you will design the link service and he has also designed here user service user service is for storing the user database but we can ignore this and here in the link service you can scale differently the read servers so you are you can deploy the code in two servers one for read request other for the write request and since it's a read heavy system you can have hundreds of read servers and few write servers because write is not very common operation in your application read is more common operation so you should scale that more by having more servers for read apis so any query on this so here what i will say is this block diagram is high level design we discussed about the database design database design you can say if you are going into the details of tables and fields and what are primary keys and what are the data type for each and every column then this is a low level design if you are designing the apis and also providing their response what would be the success response what would be the error responses what parameters will be taken by the apis these could be also considered as your uh, no low level design and then after this high level design interviewer may ask you to code and write the uh, logic for hashing the long url into a short url so i'll 
quickly take you through the logic for how would you design the logic. I have also this application working. So I'll uh, share the working example in a video later because now we are running out of time also. We are almost towards the end of this session. But I'll quickly consider that what are various ways to implement this. So here you can use various technologies. You can use Python to code this, convert the short URL to convert a long URL to short URL and respond via HTTP, the short URL. So this could be done in Python and it, this could also be done in Golang. Golang also have concurrency feature in built into the infrastructure so that can be leveraged. You can do this in Java. Java also has various frameworks, tools to, to write RESTful web services. You can use this and Java is reliable and scalable and also fast performing technology. So it is well suited and you can also use Node.js or JavaScript based implement. In Node.js also you get various frameworks, packages through which you can extend this and do it very quickly. So these are various technologies which could be used and you should be able to evaluate or list some of the pros and cons of these technologies. Python could be a little bit slow because Python is Again, a JVM based, not JV, a virtual machine, they, it runs inside an abstraction, so it could be slow. Java would be good performing application, but uh, again, there could be slight overheads as well because this application is very simple. What I have chosen, this is my preference. Also, based on the preferences, the implementation could vary. There is a small differences between uh, various implementations, but I preferred Node.js based approach here because Node.js servers are lightweight servers than Java and I can write some code. I have various packages available. So I've used Express framework on Node.js and have used this to create this application. But yes, my second choice would have been Java or Go Lang. But yes, uh, no, it hardly matters. Uh, again, depends on the preference of the implementer as well. But the design is same. Uh, design will remain the same in all the implementation. Only how you will write the code, that will change. And for database technologies also, there are a lot of options available. One of the important technology you should consider here is a key value data storage. You can also use relational databases as well. But I have here used a key value a database store, which could be something like DynamoDB. So you can use DynamoDB, which is more preferred. Here, as per my recommendation, I would prefer key value store. Don't need relational database because relational database provides lots and lots more feature than you really need in this application. Because here you don't need to take care of financial transactions. So I prefer not to use a relational database. But yes, in case you have some modules where you have to take care of money transactions and you need SIT compliance, then you can go with relational database for these microservices. But for read and write URLs, I used here a database which is similar to Dynamo. So this is all about, you know, I'll maybe share this URL of the implementation in a brief demo so that you can also play around with the tiny URL application. I'll not go through the code in detail and I'll not go through the demo of the application because of lack of time. But yes, hope you understood the design well and in case asked in the interview this particular question, you should be able to answer it very confidently. Any other comments? Any queries? And great. So yeah, I, admit, but I do not have anything. Okay. So do you feel we covered everything? Yeah, almost around by yeah. We... Yes, yes. Because yeah, in any such questions, you can go to any depth. So it's 
not always justifiable to say that okay, we covered everything, but we covered most of the important points which should be discussed in the interview. So in interview, you'll only have 45 minutes to discuss all these. So we took this much time only if we just shot the Q&As. We covered all these things, the design with included the API design. We started with the functional and non-functional requirements. Then we did the capacity planning and then we discussed API design, database design and the block diagram. So this is what is to be discussed in the interview and that would be sufficient to clear this kind of system design interviews. Great. So if no more question, then we can close the session. So have a nice Sunday ahead. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.